Hi there, it's Katrin. Welcome to the gym. Thanks so much for joining me. This video is about the bodybuilder's diet and what's wrong with it. And I'm going to talk about three points about the diets and I'm going to give you one tip, one thing you can do which will make a huge difference to your diet if you're actually looking to, to, to build size and you're looking to compete or just take the, the whole bodybuilding lifestyle seriously. So let's talk about first of all, what is wrong with the bodybuilder's diet. Now, I'm a personal trainer. I specialize in weights. Um, I'm also a coach and um, within 3Ps we also have a nutritionist called Maya Lloyd who's a weight loss specialist and between us we obviously talk about lots of things and one of the subjects we were talking about recently was bodybuilding diets and uh, we both agree that there are three basic problems with the bodybuilding diet and those, those problems are first of all that it is just so restrictive in the um, competition season that it, um, it leads to wild swings in weight and it leads to all sorts of... Um, uh, issues with binge and starve cycle eating. So that's my first point, which I'll come back to. The second point is that it is so restrictive in terms of the foods that you, you, you eat that you are deficient in real basic stuff like micronutrients being vitamins and minerals. So it's in health wise, it's a disaster uh, because your body just, in terms of its metabolic process, needs vitamins and minerals to operate. So that's the second point. So the first point is that it just is the cycle, the seesaw effect of the of the weight on and off that's really unhealthy. The second is that it's deficient in vitamins and minerals. And the third point is that it um, is really unsophisticated where blood sugar is concerned and it can lead to um, dips and surges in blood sugar, which is not helpful in terms of either your training or your, your moods. So that's the third point is in terms of the actual energy cycling. It's it's It can be really problematic. So those are the three points I'm going to make. And then, as I said, at the end, I'm going to give you one super tip for how to, what one, the one thing you can do, the one change you can make that will immediately make a huge difference to how you feel and how you, you know, how your health is on that desired. I'm not looking to try and stop you shred. I'm not looking to, you know, tell you that you can't go down to the body fat levels you want to get to. That's, you know, about being a competitive bodybuilder. And I'm a, you know, huge fan of bodybuilding, but I just think there are more healthy things that can be done with the diet. So let's start with the first point, which is about the cycle of being on competition and in competition, off competition, and what that does to you. So. Um, the joke often is that you know when you see champion bodybuilders, um, uh, often in the off season you don't even recognise them because they look so different because they've got carrying so much more weight. Now I not all bodybuilders do that, um, and I know one in particular who isn't that different off season than on, but a lot of them are. Um, and the reason for that is because to get to the levels of body fat and vascularity that you need to get you to compete. You have to have such a restricted diet, so low calories, so low carbohydrate, that it causes a rebound. It causes rebound eating. And you know, if you put that in another context, so you talk, for example, about young teenage girls who you know starve themselves, they get into a binge starve cycle. Well, it's absolutely no different with bodybuilders because it's a physical impossibility to stay on that type of restricted eating long term. Your body will rebel. So the but the bodybuilder diet actually sets you up into a binge starve cycle, which is. You know, that's a disorder, that's a mental disorder, because it is a form of disordered eating. Um, uh, I, I saw a really interesting movie, it's a movie about wrestling, and Channing Tatum's in it. When I remember the title of it, I'll put it up on the screen. It's really, I had a great movie, actually. Um, Steve Carell is amazing in it. But anyway, um, he, in that movie, it's about two brothers who are, who are uh, national level um, wrestlers. And wrestlers are like, you know, boxers or um, jockeys, they need to make a certain weight. So... The weight's a big issue for them. And um, the younger uh, wrestler is going off to compete in competition. And the first round, the, the way it works, I think it's a bit like judo, is judo. So you have you know, a series of matches, you get points, and then if you do well enough, you go on to the next level, next level, next level. Anyway, so this wrestler had had a very hard first round, much harder than he expected it to be. It was a bit of a shock, and I think he was a bit stressed. He's, he's staying away at the competition, and he goes back to his hotel room. And then he just started, decides to binge and he, he orders all this food from room service. And then you, it's really fascinating because you, they play the scene very straight that you just see the whole binge go on. It's very unusual to see, um, you know, adult men binge. You see teenage girls binge on screen, but very unusual to see adult men. Um, his brother realises that he's disappeared, so goes to try and find him, finds him and then uh, realises what's happened because he walks into the hotel room and there's obviously all the room service everywhere. And then he has to get him onto a, a you know an exercise bike and try and train the weight off him because he won't make the weight the next day, which he does. But they have to exercise for about five hours, and it's you know it's a really grueling couple of scenes. And 
it just shows you the physical extremes as a competitive sportsman you often have to go to to make weight but also the physical extremes you go to if you get into a binge starve cycle and as i said the bodybuilding ethos of you know the very restricted diet i mean pre-competition tends to lead to that you need to really keep an eye on that because it's just not healthy okay so that's my first point my second point is that the, the mere restrictedness of the diet is unhealthy the traditional bodybuilders diet is you know is is literally is is a piece of chicken and um, maybe some rice or a baked potato twice a day maybe something else for breakfast that's every day and it goes to work in the top of a container and you know it's it's fuel it's not about pleasure it's not about sociability you know if you're eating that restrictively you're generally you're not eating other people you're just bringing your food with you or eating alone um and quite apart again from what that does to in terms of your view of food and how disordered your eating can become if you are eating that plainly this isn't a clean diet this isn't oh i'll eat you know i'll eat five colors of the rainbow on my plate this is a piece of chicken and a baked potato this is really going to affect your levels of micronutrients those are your vitamins and minerals which are massively important for your metabolic processes they're important for anti-aging they're important for anti-cancer um, they're important for how you feel so um, that's my second point about bodybuilding diet so often they can become so plain that vegetables just don't feature um, the third point i wanted to make about bodybuilders diet is what it does to your energy levels because um you know if you are eating in this way of having you know, protein and then a bit of carbohydrate, often um, fast carbohydrates, so baked potato, bagel, you know, pre-exercise drink, that sort of thing. And particularly if you're taking a lot of caffeine, which maintains, what caffeine does is it encourages the body to dump sugar into, into your blood, so you get that whoosh, that's how caffeine works. What you're doing is you're, you're manipulating your blood sugar, but you're going to cause a high and a low. My friend who is a physique um, a bodybuilder, he does fall asleep in the middle of the afternoon. He's a young guy, but that's because his body is just exhausted because he's, he's, he, he gets hyperglycemic, it's high blood sugar, and then his sugar, blood sugar dips, and that's when he feels very tired. So um, it's a really unsophisticated way to operate with blood sugar. There is no reason for it, and actually if you want to get weight off, it's much more important to keep your blood sugar stable. So if you can keep your blood sugar stable, then you, you won't lay down fat. So actually, from an, from an intelligence perspective, you're much better off to look at your diet in terms of right, using slow carbohydrates. So, you know, whole meal, you know, whole, grain, whole grains, you know, try not too much wheat, um, you know, things like still cut oats, you know, lots of pulses and, you know, lentils and beans, that sort of thing. Avoid too much bread, pasta, that type of carbohydrate. Go for slow-release carbohydrates because they don't disrupt your blood sugar. Now, the one exception to that, I would say, is if you're going to train early morning. Because if you're, if you're going to train as soon as you get up, you've been fasting all night. You need some energy. And you're not going to wait two hours you know, after a meal to train. So you need to have some fast carbohydrate. It's the one time that I would say, from the timing perspective, you need to eat some fast carbohydrate. But I would say the best thing to eat in that situation is fruit. Because obviously you're getting some fiber and you're getting some uh, micronutrients as well. But you're getting the sugar from the fruit, which will get you know get you going on your training. Other than that, I would say stick to slow release carbohydrates. And so I'm going to put the link to um, Maya Lloyd's book up here. She's got a, a comment section on board the bodybuilder diet and lots of um, recommendations in relation to how you maintain your blood sugar. So she talks about which foods and also what supplements are good for you. So have a look at that book. Um, those are the three points I want to make. Now let's get to my super tip. My super tip in terms of how you can absolutely make a dent in your in your the health overdraft that you've probably been running if you if you compete is to take a green juice once a day now um i eat a, i have a green juice every day and i really enjoy it and it's not revolting i give it to other people they don't spit it out but the green juice is not the same as a smoothie and it's not a fruit juice so i don't add loads of fruit to it my recipe and again i'll put it in the notes here um is half a large apple or a small apple, a whole lime, two lettuces, so romaine or little gem, anything you can get really, uh, a bag of spinach or a bag of kale, and that is it. And that's what goes into my juicer. I do that first thing in the morning. Um, the apple actually gives you a little bit of sugar, but the rest is all just about the vitamins and minerals. Um, and I can actually make that, drink it, and wash up in about six minutes. So don't say you don't have the time to do this. If you haven't got a juicer at home and don't have the resources to get a juicer, there are lots of juice bars now, but don't be tempted by the juices that are heavy on the exotic fruit. As I said, what you want to go for is a juice that is either called a green juice or a detox juice. 
a green juice or a detox juice. Those are the two juices which will give the, you get the most bang for your buck. So I said, the one thing, the one thing you can do today which will make the most difference to your diet if you are a bodybuilder either in a competition, in either on season or off season, is to add a green juice to your diet. If you are completely um, focused on no sugar, then take the apple out. I've drunk it without apple as well, it's fine. It's slightly nicer with the apple, but you can drink it without. But it's about adding the micronutrients to your, to your diet to make you feel better. So those are my views. Those are the views of myeloid. Feel free to disagree. Put a comment below. Give me a ranking this or this, depending on what you think. Um, do subscribe. All the videos on this channel are about health, fitness, resilience, and the mindset to succeed, either in the fitness arena or more broadly. It'd be lovely to have you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon. Bye.